This video will cover valve maintenance for the Epic Air Rifle. As always, you want to begin by turning off your air source and venting your bleeder valve. This will assure that there is no air in the system as we will be removing the tank. You'll want to make sure there's no magazine and all gauges are reading zero. The low pressure side also needs to be checked and the pump handle should be in the rearward position. With all gauges reading zero, we can now unscrew our air bottle, making sure that the bottle and on and off valve stay together as one complete piece and unscrew from the rifle body, not from the tank. For this video, we are removing the tank However, it's not required so long as the bleeder valve is fully open. You'll notice two grooves in the valve stem. This allows venting should the air be retained in the rifle. You want to next loosen your barrel lock. This particular one is silver as it is pre-production. Then you'll want to release the barrel locks at the back. Split screen here showing left and right, pressing down on the paddle, lifting up on the armature, and then we can pull the barrel forward and out of the rifle. With that removed, we can now remove our cheek rest. There are two thumb screws on either side. If the thumb screw is too tight, you can use an Allen key to break that loose. Once loose, you can then finish taking it out with your fingers. Again, there is one on either side, and you'll want to lift straight up to avoid any binding in the slot. With that removed, we can now look down the center path and see the three screws, one back by the barrel lock, one approximately midship to the rifle, and then the third all the way up just at the head of the cowling. Retract the bolt, hand, the bolt handle to reach the first, breaking it loose with the square end of the Allen wrench, and then reaching down through the sight rail to finish removing. If it doesn't come out with the tool, it will fall out. Go ahead and break the rear one loose again with the square end of the Allen wrench. Now you'll notice that the cocking rail needs to be pulled back so that the hole lines up and we can reach down through the rifle and connect into the tool face. We have just one left, again breaking it loose here in the middle. And because this is the last one, you'll want to make sure that the rifle is supported from below. Tilting towards you, you'll be able to see down through the hole and you can articulate the pump arm until you see it line up properly for you to access the tool face. Going it down again through the sight rail we're going to engage the tool face and unscrew this final screw. Again, with this removed, there's nothing holding the lower grip frame onto the rifle, and you'll want to make sure the grip frame is supported from below. Release the pump arm handle and then lift the upper off of the lower receiver. You can then remove the pump handle as it simply slides over the top of the pin and set it aside. 
Now we're going to begin removing the rear breech block. First, the lower two screws. We want to break them loose using and then we're going to go ahead and run them out. Again, using a square end of the Allen key to break it loose. This is going to prevent any chance of damaging the hardware as we remove it from these locations. Going to change to our 532nd Allen key and remove the upper two screws that hold the block in. Once again, breaking them loose with the square end and then running them out uh, with the longer end of the wrench. With those out, we can then slide the back block out and we can see the valve stem as well as the valve surface. We're going to be reaching in past the valve stem to the valve retaining nut, which you can see deep inside the valve chamber. To do that, we're going to use the supplied tool that comes with your Epic, the Epic Valve Tool. We're going to insert it all the way down over the valve shaft into that nut. Make sure we have firm engagement. And then you can use an Allen key or a screwdriver to give yourself some leverage and just kind of break it away from that initial tension. Once it's broken away, you can easily remove it the rest of the way with just your hands. Once you no longer feel any resistance in your unscrewing, you can tilt the tool slightly and that will capture the valve stem and locking nut to come out of the body. As you can see, it's all gonna come out here as one piece. There's a spring in the end, which you don't wanna lose, but set aside. Looking down into the valve chamber, we can see the thick buffer or washer that's gonna remain at the base of the chamber. This ensures there is no metal on metal contact. Inspecting of the valve stem, we're gonna take a look at this O-ring seal. There's no reason to take this apart unless there is damage to this surface. On the sides here, we have a nice wrench flat that we're gonna use for a 3 8 wrench. So we're going to head and attach our wrench to the rough flats. Insert our 5 32nd Allen key into the top. Separate the tip of our valve stem from the shaft of our valve stem. You'll notice there's two O-rings being exposed. The upper one is your ceiling. The lower one is what locks it into the threads. You'll make sure the threads are clean and free of debris before proceeding on. Once again, we're looking at the threads and a closer look here at the lower O-ring and the upper O-ring. The upper O-ring is the ceiling face. The other ceiling face is here in the breech blocks itself. To get that out, we're going to go ahead and reach through the back with a small Allen key and press it out. It'll pop out from the front. And now this is your other sealing surface or the valve face. Pulling that the rest of the way out, we can now side it aside. Reassembly is opposite of disassembly, making sure that the threads are clean and clear. The O-rings are new and undamaged as well as clean. Using our wrench and our Allen key, we're gonna run those two components back together. You'll notice that the upper O-ring does protrude and is under a slight bit of compression. That is completely normal. You wanna make sure there's no gap between the head and the shaft and that the tip is screwed down nice and firm and you can see that o-ring standing slightly proud of the surface. Next we want to inspect our valve face surface taking a look at the edge. We don't want to see any debris, nicks or other damage in this conical area here. We want to make sure that's nice and clean. Two o-rings on either side need to be correct size, clean and undamaged. And finally, you'll notice a slot on the back of the breech block divider. That slot aligns inside the breech block to keep orientation correct. Looking down, you can see the male component of that engagement surface. And whenever we go to install this component, it will prevent installing it um, 
left or right, it will only allow it to install it up or down. So there is an up and there is a down. We want to make sure that after greasing these O-rings lightly, we're just putting a little bit of grease on them, um, some on each side, just filling in the lands on either side. Now when we go to put it in, we want to make sure that the orifice is facing upward, so the hole in the diverter block is facing up to the top of the breech block. The top of the breech block is the one part with the larger hole in it. Pressing that in, you'll feel some resistance, and before it clicks into place, once it's in place, you want to look once again, make sure everything is nice and flush, and remove any excess lubricant or dirt from your hand before proceeding. Lubricating the outer O-ring on the breech block is necessary prior to install, but we also want to make a quick inspection to ensure that it's not clipped or damaged as it can cause a leak. So with that inspected, uh, we're going to take one final look at our valve seat. Again, all debris and fingerprints and everything should be clean off of that. Wipe our grease around the outer black O-ring on the outside of the breech block, and moving on. The valve does move back and forth, much less than I'm demonstrating here. However, we do want to go ahead and introduce some passive lubrication to the O-ring on this shaft. Uh, this O-ring uh, generally will not be damaged or need replaced. However, uh, it is important to make sure it's properly lubed. So we're going to simply run the retaining nut over it a few times just to make sure we have appropriate lubrication on the inside and outside of that nut. Wiping the excess grease on the outer O-rings will ensure that it seals properly to the body once reinstalled. Good, once again, making sure that it goes over. And then finally, we're looking at this back face here. We want to make sure that the O-ring itself is lubricated and not this face. So the final O-ring that we're going to lubricate here is on the head of the piston shaft on the silver component as it separates from the other silver component with a bolt on it. Just want to wipe around that o-ring. Again, just filling the crevices on either side of the o-ring. And making sure that flat surface is nice and clean. Before reinstalling, we're going to drop our spring back into our piston base or excuse me, our valve base. Into the valve shaft, we put the spring, and then we put the entire valve assembly inside our tool facing upwards. You can see in the tool, it has a engaging face for the nut. So we wanna slide it over the nut and have the whole valve assembly vertical when we install it into the valve body of the rifle so that it is square with the threads and that o-ring stays captured. You're going to press until you feel a small click, start to turn. You should not feel any significant resistance other than the turning of the threads. Uh, if you do feel it start to cross that or become difficult, you will want to stop and try again. You should be able to run it almost all the way in just with your fingers and then your final snug uh, into position can be done again with either a screwdriver through the handle or an allen key just to give yourself that small bit of extra leverage. You're not going for a heavy amount of torque here, you just want to make sure that it is snug. Next is to put our breech block back in place. We're going to go ahead and slide it in. Remember we've lubricated the o-ring on the outside of this component. Sliding it in, it will press into place. And then we're going to go ahead and replace the hardware. Now this plate is torqued into place, so we will want to start by running all four pieces of hardware in individually before adding torque. So we're going to put in our two lower screws. Again, we're not tightening these right now. We're simply making sure the plate is aligned. As you notice, the magnets are, are quite strong in this area. They are the magnets that hold in your magazine. So just be careful as they will grab the hardware as you go past them. 
not going for snug, simply bottomed out in the hole. As I mentioned before, we will be torquing these, so we do not want to apply any additional torque prior to using the measured instrument. So again, here we're just reaching the bottom of the hole, not applying any significant torque, and we're also gonna work in a cross pattern. Now this pattern can be reversed or changed so long as it's a cross type pattern because you want to make sure that the breech block is pressed in evenly. We'll now take our torque wrench and using a 3 16 bit we're going to put 10 foot pounds of torque on our lower hardware vice the rifle, or in this case, just hold it by hand. We're going to then put our 5.30 seconds bit on and put six foot-pounds of torque on the upper bolts. We're going to then switch back to our 3 sixteenths on our lower, again, 10 foot-pounds. And then finally, we will move up to our last bolt upper one being 530 seconds and receiving six foot pounds of torque. With those torqued into place, we can now move on to reassembly. If your cocking rod came off, you want to go ahead and put it right back in place, lower the body on, and slide into rear position. We can now check pump handle function and go ahead and reinstall our shoulder brace or our shoulder pad assembly. Noting the two bolts that secure it, go ahead and slide that into place. Once again, we will be using a 5.30 seconds Allen key to run those two screws in. You may need to slide the component a little bit forward and back to get into place and snug up left and right independently. With those snug, we can move on to reinstalling the pad, slightly sliding down from the top, and tightening our two bolts. Final step in the process is to reverse the process where we took the three body screws out. We're going to run them in, starting with the middle one, basically getting it into place, screwing all the way down, and then using the square end of our Allen key to tighten it. Same process in the rearmost screw, and finally the same process in the front screw. Finally sliding our cheek rest down into place, and we've finished this process. Thank you for joining us. Follow us on YouTube for more technical and exciting videos.